Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. I'm Eliza here at the Hatfield Public Library and I have a box of adult books. But first on the top, just a few DVDs get out on the shelf. So do do let's see. If I align myself with my camera, let's see what we have. This is called The Baker's Son. It's sort of like a light romantic comedy. This is definitely like a good choice for someone who's just like really burned out from everything in the pandemic. Um, it's a Hallmark Channel original movie, and it's about a man who bakes bread with passion and is the son of a baker, and they live on a small island, and um, he turns to his childhood friend for help, and they fall in love. I think you know what you're getting into if you choose that movie. This is a very different direction here. The Man with the Answers. Um, this is set in uh, Greece. Oh, no. It's about a guy from Greece who goes on a um, road trip through Europe and ends up picking up someone who rides with him. And I think that they fall in love but also argue a lot. Um, I watched the trailer for this one because I was sort of curious about it. And I... I really enjoyed the trailer. Both of the men were very just like, like fun and charming and, but then like emotional. So it was like engaging. Uh, not at a phase in my life right now where I'm watching long foreign films because I have a toddler, but someday I would love to add it to my list. Another one I would like to add to my list, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And uh, this is from director Jason Raitman and producer Ivan Raitman. I don't even know what these things mean, but probably good. Uh, uh, it's about a single mom and her two kids. They discover their connection to the original Ghostbusters, uh, in the secret legacy that their grandfather, an original Ghostbuster, left behind. That's all good. Okay. Uh, Clifford, the big red dog, they've made it into a movie, which is really funny. Clifford is so big. The, um, books, this is based on a popular series of kids' books, and they were always very unrealistic. Because they were about a girl who had a pet dog the size of a barn, and her parents were very chill about this. <laughs> uh, now, now it's a movie. Okay, here we are with books. Uh, we're starting out with one that I know I am interested in. This is called Joan is Okay by Wika Wang. Uh, sorry if I haven't pronounced that correctly. And about a 30 something ICU doctor at a busy New York City hospital. Um, the child of Chinese uh, immigrants, um, intensely in her work. Um, her parents moved to, back to China, but then her father died suddenly. A lot of stuff happens with the family. And also, health crisis, I think you can probably guess what the health crisis is. You have been, like, living in the world. You probably know what the health crisis is. Uh, but really good reviews. Reminders of him, Pauline Hoover. Uh, can someone get some sort of like sad this romance? After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Hannah Rowan returns to this town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her uh, her four-year-old daughter. And uh, yes, there's a romantic interest, um, mistakes in the past, so sort of family drama with a romantic element. The text by Erin Sterling. Whoops. Now there was just romantic. I like getting some paperbacks in that last one was a paperback so lightweight. Oh no, I love that the thing on the top says, um, never mix vodka and witchcraft. This is kind of interesting too. It says that Aaron Sterling is also Rachel, who I think started in YA and has now been writing adult. Um, so so maybe uh I'm not sure why sometimes she's Aaron Sterling and sometimes Rachel Hawkins, but uh if you like one, maybe you'll like the other. <laughs> Um, yeah, again, romance, witchcraft, sounds funny. And more serious, again, The Postmistress of Paris by Meg Waite Clayton. Uh, da da, historical fiction, um, dark early days of the German occupation in France, and it's a love story and a tale of high stakes danger. A lot of people already asking for that one. Oh, nice. Saving Us, a climate scientist case for hope and healing in a divided world by Catherine Hi-Ho. 
always nice to have a positive, uh, hopeful book. And, um, this is, it says he's one of the nation's most effective communicators on climate change. Anybody who watched the movie Don't Look Up knows you need a effective communicator to explain these things. Um, and so this is her book. It sounds like she's a very, she's done a lot of stuff. Um, so we think here from her. Uh, all that she carried, um, I think we got this one already, but maybe I'm just remembering wrong. <laughs> maybe I'm just remembering wrong. Um, it got the national, won the National Book Award. It's called All of She Carried by Tia Mills, The Journey of Ashley Sack, a Black Family Keepsake. And, um, this is, this is so sad. I listened to a, a interview with the author and I just cried and cried when she told me the story. Um, about this woman who uh, whose daughter was sold in the 1850s and how she sent this back with her with things that maybe she would need and to help her remember her family. Oh, okay, I'm gonna cry like I can't even can't even imagine. Uh, one bite. Um, I have to remember these two books, Harry <laughs> and Gunfight, were in a box with um, some children. So that's why I've seen them before. Um, this is by Ryan Boosie, and it's My Battle Against the Industry That Radicalized America. Uh, and uh, so he was an avid hunter, outdoorsman, conservationist, and um, worked in the firearms industry, but now he feels like it's taken a dark turn. I think many of us would agree with that. And now it's uh, a lot of military-style uh, weapons and internet policing and the sewing division. So um, so he's sort of calling out the industry in this. The Replacement Wife, this has all the look of a sort of classic domestic thriller. Um, it's by the author of Pretty Little Wife, Darby Kane. And do, do, do. How many girlfriends need to disappear before your family notices? The age-old question, um, oh, When We Cease to Understand the World by Benjamin Labatu. And um, this was, uh, uh, it's just shortlisted for the 2021 International Booker Prize. It definitely, like, had a lot of holds on it, even though it was published a little while ago. I think it's been getting some international attention. It's a book about complex ties between scientific and mathematical understanding and personal and historical Catastrophe. Um, so it explores specifically the lives of um, specific people and um, uses fact and fiction. Honestly, I don't know what any of this means. I don't know what's going on with this book, but something, it must be something because it, um, a lot of people want to read it and it has a really cool cover. And we're back with another domestic thriller, thriller Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. Um, dun, dun, dun. oh my God, oh my God, about a girl who, when she was 19, her uh, neighbors were brutally murdered um, and she left home, but now she's back in. Hold Your Dream by Ian Wallace. Unlock your unconscious and transform your waking life. So intriguing, so fun. I'm totally into this. Uh, like astro astrology books tend to be popular. Um, I don't know why I think this is going to have to, it's not like there's going to be photographs of people's dreams, um, but it says, you know, like if something um, happens to you in a dream, like catching a train, uh, public performance, having no money, um, a missing body part, it sort of tells you what it means, and then it gives, it has a section on awaking your potential. So I think that sounds interesting. I kind of want to check out some things and see what they mean. Hell of a book. This is another um, award winter, award winner, award winter, um, that we sort of belatedly uh, bought to catch up with, um, with things. And, uh, this is about a African American author who sets out on a cross country publicity tour to promote his best selling novel. Sounds like maybe a little, it's a little bit more meta. It also seems like there's some, uh, and yeah, sounds like there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening, and I'm sure it won awards for me.
Okay. The real Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, Big Pharma, and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health. So this is by the very controversial Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and he's sort of um, has, someone didn't tell him the uh, margins, but he has, um, you know, some very suspect information about vaccines that he's putting out there. You know, here at the library, people are requesting the book, so we are just Providing that for them. The Magnolia Palace, a novel by Fiona Davis. And uh, it's, uh, eight months after losing her mother to the Spanish flu, 21-year-old Lillian Carter's life has completely fallen apart. Sounds like she was a model in New York City. Oh, and then there's another 50-year-later timeline. That sounds like just like a solid historical fiction dual timeline. Good choice. We have a new Stuart Wood, Criminal Mystic, Stone Barrington novel, and two more to go. Our Country Friends by Gary Schnegart, a very popular uh, author, and um, he wrote Super Sad True Love Story. He writes short stories. This is about what does it mean to be a friend? Oh, look, in a rolling hills of upstate New York, a group of friends and friends of friends gather in a country house to wait out the pandemic. So six months of living together. It says that the unlikely cast of characters includes a Russian board novelist, his psychiatric psychiatrist wife, um, their K-pop obsessed child, a struggling Indian American writer, a wildly successful Korean American app developer, a global dandy, a southern flamethrower. I don't know what that means. Oh, a southern flamethrower of an essayist and a movie star. That just seems like kind of fun. People are going to like what the feeling is out there. People are really going to want to be like reading all those pandemic books. They're maybe like, but I think if that if you, I don't know, that sounds intriguing to me. I don't really want to read about the pandemic, but it seems like a good setup. Last book, Just Like the Other Girls, a novel by Claire Douglas. Um, at loose ends after the devastating death of her mother, Una Richardson responds to an advertisement for a late and an old school. It looks, but that sounds so old school. Um, and so it's not the comforting haven it seems. Um, they resent her presence. Hmm. Oh, and then the two girls lived be here, be, that live were there before her. Um, maybe bad things happened. <laughs> so. That sounds good. Um, so here's my gigantic empty box. And we will work on getting all those books and those movies out on the shelf.